welcome to Katie's Insight, where I give my insight on all kinds of things, including news, business, finance, entertainment, politics, and most importantly right now, stimulus. I feel like almost all of those subjects right now cover stimulus because it's our one point of focus because we're starving and we need help. But guys, I am pretty excited and I think I might even be confident we're about to get some help soon. What am I talking about? Well, if you guys saw my videos from earlier, what I've been detailing is that very exciting. It looks like we're having an extension on stimulus. We're having an extension and that vote is either sometime between today and tomorrow. This is very good news. But here's the big thing. How do we know if anything's actually going to pass? And this is where I have good news on that today. So let me just go ahead and quickly detail where we're at and where we need to go. Before I do guys, I do tons of different information and have tons of videos to help you guys with stimulus. So if you feel called to and you want more information for your for yourself, friends, family, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification button because the notifications, it'll alert you when I help you find stimulus money because I'm helping people find stimulus monies in their areas. But the early bird gets the worm, so you gotta be quick. So make sure and hit that notification button so you can know what's going on. And if you need more one-on-one -on -one help in your area, Katie's Insight is my Facebook page. Like the page, join the groups called Katie's Corner. We'll be changed to Katie's Insight soon. Go in there, ask all the stimulus questions you want, ask about stimulus for your area. By the end of this week, we're gonna try, fingers crossed, to get a document together of all the money in the different states and cities so you know where you can go at. But it's just me and volunteers right now doing all of this stuff and I'm trying to keep up with this channel and my other channels. So it's a little bit hectic. Also guys, go to my other channel, Joy Sparkle VS. I just put up a couple videos One's about Princess Diana, and the other video is about Britney Spears. And this actually just gives a take on women's health. So very interesting stuff, if that's something you would be interested in. I'm taking like, I like to look at major like political or pop figures, look at them in different issues they've had in their life, and maybe break some things down people don't know of. For instance, like Britney Spears, y'all remember she had her breakdown a while ago, right? I like to look at that and give some insight and say, well, is part of that because she had some postpartum issues? because I've never heard that come up. So certain things of that nature that I think is a big, important conversation when it comes to women and women's health in this country. So make sure and go over there and check out those videos. I'll have links somewhere within these videos so you can go see that. Um, and if you like that kind of content, then go subscribe to that channel, love to have you. Um, it's just a little more pop culture than this. This is more financial and whatnot. Okay, so with all that out of the way, stimulus, where are we at? That $908 billion package from the Problem Solvers Caucus seems to be the big thing on the agenda and the most popular. Now, right now, we have Mitch McConnell who says he's on board for it, right? Now, right now, we have Nancy Pelosi who says she's fully on board with that deal. Remember, not gonna piecemeal anything, $3.4 trillion for her state, Nancy. Now, all of a sudden, as she said, I'm not going to sell the American people out for their best interest, sells out her best interest for a smaller deal. I'm not going to let any of that go, all the BS she's been talking about. But where's everybody else? Well, we know Mitch McConnell is very excited because just recently, when it comes to the Treasury, this was a couple weeks ago, Steve Mnuchin, and thank God for Steve. Hey, Steve, hey. He's the one that got the ball rolling back on stimulus negotiations, and Steve asked from the Fed 450 billion back to be able to repurpose to the government to continue having funding for stimulus. So Mitch McConnell is all excited. Now Mitch McConnell has his own proposal between 333 to about 600-ish billion. I've seen that number change several times. We'll see what that is. For a bill that he is trying to do for himself in regards to stimulus in the Senate. I predict it's going to <laughs> fall flat. And even let's say on a Hail Mary, it does pass the Senate. The House won't allow it. So right now we have the Problem Solvers Caucus. It's not perfect. It doesn't have stimulus checks in it, but that doesn't mean they can't be negotiated in. Remember, when you hear about bills and these bills that you're hearing about until it's voted on, these are up for negotiation. So don't think because it doesn't start or end with something or nothing doesn't mean that won't be put into place. And considering all sides of the aisle want stimulus help and stimulus check help, I think we still have a good shot. So where are we at though? So where are we at with all this with Mitch McConnell? Mitch McConnell hasn't really thrown his weight behind this as he's doing his own bill this week. And what about the White House? Because remember guys, it doesn't matter if the Democrats are on board, we have to make sure we get Republicans and the White House. So where are they? We finally have some good news. My curmudgeon, Larry, I say curmudgeon, I bet he's a really nice person. I don't know why I call him curmudgeon. I know I call curmudgeon to Mitch McConnell because he's evil. I don't think Larry's evil. I do think he's optimistic and sometimes sells his crap a little bit, 
but I don't think it's ill-intended. Like, there are certain players I like. My favorite, Steve Mnuchin. I think he's the boy that's on our side. I think Larry Kudlow is really trying to, but remember, he also is, in some regards, a mouthpiece for Trump, where the Treasury Secretary kind of just does his own thing. And he, I, love, I also love it when people try to give him sass or crap on him for stuff or lie about him. He will sass them right back. He's pretty level-headed and doesn't care, but then every so often he'll stand up for himself. He'll snap back, and he gives him the sass back. Yeah, Steve. I love Steve. But Larry ended up talking yesterday, and he talked a lot about stimulus. There were several things he said. He was called out on that V-shape recovery. He keeps saying, we're in a V, we're in a V, we're in a V. So he talks about that, and then they specifically ask Larry, so is the president going to be on board with this $908 billion? And we get what, to me, sounds like a confirmation. So this is great, because let me tell you what this means. It means now we have both the Democrats, and we have the White House on board. And on top of that, you might be thinking, what about Mitch McConnell? Don't we have to have him on board? Absolutely, but here's the kicker. In this interview, and I'm gonna detail all of it for you, in this interview that he does, he says Mitch McConnell is basically the one leading the negotiations on behalf of the White House right now. So the White House, even though they are kept up to date, they are in talks with everybody. In terms of the negotiations, they've taken a step back, which makes sense. Trump's focus right now is trying to overturn that election, love him or hate him, this is his focus. I understand the logic of it. So he has taken a step, and on top of that, if he's gonna be leaving the office soon, how much can he really do? Trump has taken a step back to an extent, and now Mitch McConnell leads the way. So if we hear the White House is on board and Mitch McConnell's the one leading the White House, doesn't that kind of, don't you kind of put point A and point B together? And doesn't that say that it sounds like that Mitch McConnell will be on board? I do think we're gonna have to have his, whatever his crap bill is, be voted and tossed out or have nothing done with it. So we're gonna have to go through that process, but the good news even there, as I've detailed today, we are most likely getting a one week extension on that continuing resolution. The continuing resolution, that stop gap funding for the government so we can keep the government open, is going hand in hand and being voted on with stimulus. They're right together. And the end date we've heard about is going to be December 11th. Not anymore. It looks like it's going to be December 18th. It will keep you guys up to date when we have clear confirmation that that is it and it's done. But I don't see anybody not passing that at this point because it's so important and everybody knows we have to get something done. But before I say anything else, I want to go into everything Larry had to say and we're going to break down the details and see what we can pick from this. So take it away, Mr. Kamrajan, and let's see what you got. Welcome to Washington Post Live. I'm Robert Costa, National Political oh, I Reporter. I can't hear him. My guest today is Larry Kudlow, Guys. President Trump's Hello? chief economic advisor inside the White House. Oh, I got him. And he serves as the director of the National Economic Council. Today, Larry joins us to talk about the state of the U.S. economy, whether Congress can pass a stimulus bill with COVID relief before adjourning, and the economic challenges facing the Biden administration in the coming year. Larry, welcome back to Washington Post Live. Thank you, Robert. I Sorry, I cut in. I couldn't hear you, but you're now loud and clear. Good to be with you. I'm glad to hear it, Larry. And I hear you loud and clear. So let's begin with a loud and clear exchange on the economy. The, the latest jobs numbers are not promising. Uh, does the president regret he didn't push for a stimulus in the run up to the election? Well, two things here. Uh, first of all, I, I want to say that the economy right now is much stronger than that jobs report. I think the jobs report is basically an outlier. And I think the drop to 6.7% unemployment is very important. You know, we've cut the unemployment rate by near 60% in six months time. It took five years for the prior administration. But let me make more important. 484,000 people in the private survey uh, were added to the job rolls. And that's why I think it's much more promising. New business applications are soaring right now. So you're seeing a continuation of strong growth. Every other index, Bob, and this is the key point, whether you're looking at housing, which is in a boom, um, mortgage applications for new homes, new purchases, uh, up 27% year on year. Automobiles, uh, very, very strong. Consumer spending, very, very strong. Uh, we're seeing durable goods manufacturing CapEx, very, very strong. The PMIs, the purchasing managers, mm -hmm. very, very strong. My favorite, we are here at the holiday season. Uh, my favorite indicator 
is from my friend Ed Hyman, uh, one of the very best Wall Street economists. His people survey uh, Christmas tree sales around the country, and um, they're up 29% above a year ago. That's uh, pre-pandemic. So look, I I'm just going to make the case that I think we are in a strong V-shaped recovery. I do believe there are threats to that recovery with respect to the Christmas uh, pops in uh, the Christmas jumps in the virus. We can talk about that in a moment. Uh, however, but Larry, I do want to Larry, just to jump in a little bit just for a moment on, on the, your... the V-shaped recovery point you just made. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you now acknowledge, though, that it's not a total V-shaped recovery, that the economy needs help, that it's not just going to be a total V-shape bounce back? Well, I don't know. I mean, every indicator I just mentioned is a V, every single one. Now, I've I've made the case, the president's made the case. I, I have to just push back a little bit in your opening sentence. President Trump pre-election uh, has always wanted a deal uh, with respect to extending some of the um, uh, assistance from the federal government. He's always wanted a deal. In fact, pre-election, he issued several uh, executive orders. I mean, I know this because I helped write them uh, that added federal uh, unemployment assistance, um, took care of, um, you know, various uh, home delinquencies, student loan delinquencies, evictions and so forth. He, I mean, he's always been what he didn't want is a three or four trillion dollar package where uh, over a third of it had nothing to do with COVID or the economy. So, I, you know, I just think that's sure. not. So correct. what's his level of engagement right now, Larry? In the stimulus talks, well, we, look, we are talking we're, uh, lots of conversations going on, and mm -hmm. Bob, we are moving in the right direction. I think we are getting closer. I can't guarantee. I, I'm not here uh, today to make an announcement, but I, I will say, with respect to core, what I'll call core principles, that we have supported all along. Uh, to wit, uh, extend the small business loans, the so PPP. Uh, which was a great help. By the way, temporary layoffs have fallen 85%. Uh, that's a tremendous number, and I think attests to that PPP relief uh, package. Number two, we should have unemployment assistance because even 6.7% is too high, and uh, we're getting reports that uh, some of the states on the two coasts are beginning heavy restrictions on new businesses. I don't agree with that point of view, but whatever. We're worried about spiking uh, um, COVID. So we'd like to get some uh, federal plus up. And I think the number is congregating around $300 a week, which would be acceptable uh, to the administration. We're more, more uh, than happy to put in uh, any additional no uh, dollars for the um, vaccination, uh, the distribution of the vaccination. Uh, we're happy to do that. And we've always been happy to put in more uh, money for schools, uh, particularly COVID related, any kind of, you know, equipment or partitions or renovations that are necessary to keep the schools open. We believe the schools should be kept open. So I I'm not here to negotiate, obviously, and I'm not here to make a decision, but I can tell you the congressional committees in both houses are talking on both sides of the aisle. The leadership is talking on both sides of the aisle. Uh, we are joining that uh, discussion, the president, uh, the treasury secretary. Uh, we're all talking to the, each other right now. So is the president would... on the same page as Leader McConnell? Uh, in the main, by the way, speaking of Leader McConnell, I, I neglected. There has to be some liability limits in this. Uh, and is that a way, red the... line for the White House? Well, I don't want to talk about red lines. Um, Senator McConnell's really our lead negotiator. But look, we all agree, and I noticed that the, the, the bipartisan problem solvers uh, have uh, liability limits in their proposal. And I think that's just common sense. Those limitations, by the way, would not only help small businesses, which is, you know, they're not in good shape, particularly with these new restrictions, but also help schools, school systems and also help governments. So I think um, this is no time for the trial lawyers to get in the way. And that's one of the key points that has to be uh, in this package. What's your personal level of engagement on the stimulus? Um, we're involved every day. We're here to back up uh, 
Chief Meadows and um, Secretary of the Treasury uh, Mnuchin, and of course advised mm -hmm. the president. We've had quite a few conversations about this. Um, but I think it's fair to say right now, in terms of our position, Senator McConnell is really the leader. Um, but again, we're all in the midst of these discussions. And incidentally, again, to repeat, before and now after the election, President Trump has always argued in favor of an additional assistance package, always. So he's argued Just in favor, but is he going to lean in, Larry? I mean, if you're talking to an everyday American who's looking for some more support, or you're talking to an investor, and you're being candid with them, and they say, is there going to be a deal before the new year or not? What would you say? I'd say the odds are improving. Well, that's very vague. <laughs> I know. You're asking me to make a legislative, political but, but You're not making a hard bet there. The odds are improving. I mean, that's, that's not We're, total optimism. Uh, I'm going to play this one on the cautiously optimistic side, only because, as you know, we've had a bunch of false starts, particularly before the election. We thought we were headed into it. Look, um, Speaker Pelosi, who insisted before the election there would be no package uh, unless it was the two to three trillion, she has changed her view. That's a big plus, okay? I give a credit here. I don't, I'm not being uh, snarky, I'm giving her credit. Good. Uh, we're now focusing on this $900 billion problem solvers package, and I'm not here to say that's the deal. I'm not, I'm just saying the fact that Speaker Pelosi signed on to that uh, is a good step in the right direction. I can't make a forecast, Robert, you know that. We'll know it when we know it. There are other complications. Yeah, but when you say you're focused on the problem solvers deal, $908 billion, that's a pretty big indicator that that's where the deal could be. The problem solvers deal is where the White House's chief economic advisor has his eye. I think that um, the policies inside the package are more important than the number. I will say this number is more reasonable, far more reasonable than uh, the Democrats, uh, Democratic numbers uh, a month ago or two months ago, far more reasonable. And I think that's why I characterize this as a step in the right direction. And I would also be cautiously optimistic about it. Uh, that's about as far as I can go. Why do you think that the centrists uh, Senator Collins, Senator Romney, Senator Manchin are driving this negotiation in a way they were it months ago. What's going on? Um, that's hard to say. I, I just think that I, I don't know. All right, I know all of them have a great deal of respect for them. Uh, I think there was a sense uh, after the election that People wanted to give another try. It looked dead in the water pre-election, after the election. Um, maybe this, some of the sensitivities of the election have waned a bit. Um, but I, you know, I, I think Washington in general, okay, this is a, I can only take credit for this statement myself, but I think in general, the congressional leaders want a package. But it has to be a good package, a smart package, and again, it has to deal with the core issues of small businesses and distribution of the vaccines and keeping the schools open and uh, liability limitations, things of that sort. We still uh, don't want, the president doesn't want to see a gigantic assistance package for state and local governments that he believes uh, were mismanaged. And I think he has a pretty strong point there. So. My understanding of this bipartisan package is they have moved significantly in the Republican Senate direction and in the White House direction, and uh, the Democrats are more attentive to it now, the speaker and so forth. So that's the only answer I can give you. Are you talking to the Biden people at all about the stimulus in the economy? I personally have not yet. Um, I have written a couple of notes of congratulations to very dear friends of mine who have uh, been announced to have posts in the Biden administration. They're old friends. And although we may differ on policies, they're still old friends. Um, 
former regulars on the uh, uh, primetime hit show Cudlow Report on CNBC. J Jared Bernstein, for sure, was I, I think he was on the Cudlow Report more than Larry Cudlow, Jared Bernstein. <laughs> I don't want to get Jared in any trouble, <laughs> but yes, he was one of the notes I wrote. <laughs> I don't think he has to be confirmed by the Senate, so he's okay. No, he does not. He does not. Larry, you have a, a, a unique perch. You're inside of the Trump White House. We've seen many reports from the Post and others in recent days that the president is angry. He's working with Rudy Giuliani, who's now been hospitalized with the coronavirus. The president's furious. And he is, per some reports, not working too much, not focused on the pandemic. What's your response to those, those reports and that talk? Well, I spent a lot of time with him mm -hmm. in recent, actually recent weeks. I mean, we were together, let's see, a couple of weekends ago, we had APEC and G20 meetings. So I spent about six hours with him. We just had a China policy meeting uh, in the Oval Office. Uh, I've spoken to him many times. I don't see an angry president. I do see a president who uh, believes it's important to look very carefully at uh, possible election fraud. Okay, I do see that. I think that is his right. On the other hand, I think he's engaged. We've already made um, some foreign policy decisions. Uh, we will be signing, he will be signing some executive orders. Uh, on important domestic and economic uh, issues. And um, I think the business of governing and the business of developing policy continues to go very well in the White House. I don't see this, I, I, I've read about it, but I don't see this angry, angry president. I see a, a, a person who has, uh, first of all, been very gracious uh, to those of us uh, who are close to him in, in a circle. And he's also working hard on everything. Yes, the election issue is part of that work. So is foreign policy. So is economic policy. So is trade policy. Okay, yeah, I got my notes in front of me. Let's go. By the way, this was like over a half hour. I tried to tailor it down only to what I thought was important for stimulus, but they talked a lot. So sorry it's a bit long, but there's a lot to go over. So let's start. So on the economy, the latest jobs numbers aren't promising, and that's true. We're starting to have waning jobs. That were before they were going down, down, down. The unemployment numbers, you know, we're starting to see unemployment come back up, and there's not nearly as many jobs coming back to the economy. So he says, "Will the president push for stimulus?" Good questions. And this is what he says on the economy. He says, "The economy." This is Larry. The economy is much stronger than the jobs report. I think the jobs being at six point seven percent is very important. We cut the unemployment rate 60% in six months. It took five years for Obama to do that. I know he says that, and look, I'm not a big fan of Obama. I'm not really a big fan of Obama or what he did. I'm not really a big fan of hardly any of the past presidents, but he says we cut it in half by 60%. The Obama administration can do that. Well, let's just, I mean, yes, let's give credit where it's due, but also they weren't going through a pandemic and they didn't have a bunch of government funds at their disposal over the last year or at least a few months like a CARES Act to be able to help overcome that. So I don't know that that's a real accurate thing to say, but then again, remember, everybody's gonna spin their own narrative. I'm just kind of, I, I try to break it down fairly. So if I hear something that doesn't sound fair and that's from Trump, I'm gonna tell y'all. And a lot of people think I'm a closet Trump supporter. I'm really not, I'm just breaking down what I see. So he says, we cut the unemployment rate 60% in six months. It took five years for Obama to do that. 480,000 in private, in a private survey. That's how many jobs were added to the force, but i would heard it was 240. So which one is it? Is it like, I don't know. That one I'm, I'm not real sure what to think about because uh, I've heard very differently, but he might, maybe he's talking about over a few months. He didn't really say exactly. And he says, that's why I think it's so promising. New business applications are soaring right now. You are seeing continuation of strong, um, of, of stronger growth. He says every other index, whether you look at housing, mortgage applications for new homes, that's up 27% year round. Cars, it's very strong. Consumer spending is very strong. Durable goods, manageable goods are very strong. Purchasing managers are strong. My favorite indicator, he says this, is from a Wall Street economist I know. X Christmas trees are up 29% above a year ago pre-pandemic. I'm going to make a case that I think we are in a strong V-shaped recovery. I think we have things that might hinder that coming and like the virus jumping, but I think we're in a strong V-shaped recovery. So a couple things I wanna go over when he goes to this. 
Okay, so he says new business applications are soaring. You know, I had seen this before and I thought this was interesting. If you guys remember the history with the Great Depression, when it comes to the Great Depression, the Great Depression happened and then right after that we had the Roaring Twenties. So I kind of speculate and a lot of people are wondering if after this horrible situation, if we're going to have a booming upward trajectory bust of some type of economic growth. So when he does say there are good indicators like people trying to put in new business applications, um, but I also think there's a lot of people right now who are rushing to try to fill the holes and the gaps that are needed for people staying at home too and trying to get something up and running. And hopefully if you can, it can be cost effective. So I can see it from both ways, but let's continue. The interviewer says, the V-shape recovery point, can you acknowledge it's not a V-shape? It needs help, the economy. It's not just a V-shape to bounce back. And I think he finally needs to acknowledge that. I would agree with that. This is what he says. He says, I don't know. Every indicator I mentioned is a V. And that's fantastic, Larry, but that's only the indicators you mentioned. What about all the others that aren't being mentioned? That's, again, my opinion, a little bit of a narrative spin. I've made the case. The president has made the case. I've had to push back a little here. Trump pre-election has always wanted a deal with respect to extending assistance from the government. All correct. He's always wanted an ideal in, uh, in fact. He issued executive orders. I helped write them. That added federal unemployment assistance, took care of home delinquencies, student loans, evictions. He's always wanted that. He didn't want a $3.4 trillion package where a third of it goes to states and not to help the virus. We wanted to help the economy. I'm in agreement with all of that. It does really bother me that it seems like people have completely forgotten those executive orders Trump did. So then he says, the interviewer says, what's his level of engagement with stimulus talks? Larry says there's lots of conversations going on. We are moving in the right direction. We are getting closer. I can't guarantee you're making an announcement in respect to the, uh, in respect to core principles that we should all be doing certain things like extending the PPP. Temporary layoffs are down. Temporary layoffs have fallen 85% and that's because of the PPP. We should have unemployment assistance too. This one kind of bothers me because it's like, I think most small businesses who needed the PPP are gone and they didn't give a second or third round of PPP or funding and the EIDL was a joke. So it, I don't know. When I, when I look at this, that one bothers me. He says even 6.7% is too high and we are getting reports that some of the state's on two coasts are getting heavy restrictions on new businesses. We don't agree with that. So they're talking, basically they're talking about on the coasts um, right now, a lot of places are starting to shut down. Like California's doing some weird stuff, y'all. Look into California and how weird it's getting over there. So he says, um, but we are worrying about the virus spikes. We want federal plus up. He's talking about the stimulus. Like, you know, he says, I, I think about 300 a week for unemployment, which is acceptable to the administration. More than happy to put any additional dollars for vaccinations, distribution of vaccinations. Always happy to put more money in there for schools and virus-related issues for schools. He says, I, we believe schools should be kept open. I'm not here to negotiate or make decisions, but I can tell you both congressional houses are talking. Leadership on all sides of the aisle are talking. We are in discussions with the president, the treasury secretary, and myself. Then he says, is the president on the same page as McConnell? He says, also, and then he pivots. He tries to get out of this one. There has to be some liability on this. And then he says, the interviewer says, is that a red line for the White House? Larry says, I don't want to talk about red lines. McConnell is our lead negotiator. We all agree. And the problem solvers have liability limits in their proposal. And I think that's just common sense. There's limitations. By the way, would help small businesses, which aren't in good shape, but will help schools and school systems and governments. This is no time for trial lawyers to get in the way of key talking points. And he says, What's your personal level of engagement on stimulus? Good question. He says, we are involved every day. We are here to back up Chief Meadows and Mnuchin and advise the president. We had quite a few conversations about this. It's fair to say right now, our position is that Mitch McConnell's our leader in negotiations, but we are all involved to repeat before and after the election, Trump always argued that he was in favor of another stimulus package. Agreed. So he says uh, he's argued in favor of Trump, but will Trump lean into this? If someone is asking if there will be a deal before the new year, where are we at? Larry, sly old Larry says, I want to say odds are improving. <laughs> that is just such a spin of an answer again. And he says, that's very vague. Good, he called him out. Larry says, I know you are asking me to make a political legislative forecast. And I get where Larry is. Larry has to be careful not to talk too much for other people and that sort of thing. 
But again, you know, the, 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 the journalist's view, the journalist's goal is to try to get more info out so you can see what's going on. The journalist says, you aren't making a hard line there. Odds are improving. It's not total optimism. Larry says, and that's actually a good, this, this guy was really smart in some of his interview questions because, you know, the Trump administration has tried to keep very optimistic to the point where they've gotten criticism that they haven't let people know the reality of how bad this is. So he's kind of doing some little jabs and weaknesses that have come up. Larry says, I will play on this cautiously optimistic side because you know we've had a lot of these false starts before the election and we thought we had it. Speaker Pelosi, who said before the election, said there would be no package unless it's two or three trillion. She's changed her view. That's a big plus. I give her credit. I'm not being snarky here. We are now focusing on the $908 billion problem solvers caucus. I'm not saying that's the deal, but the fact that Pelosi's behind it is a good step in the right direction. I can't make a forecast, but we'll know when we know. Well, he won't be snarky to her, but I will. Screw you, Nance. Woman drives me nuts. Then the interviewer says, you say you're focusing on a problem solvers bill, but that's a bigger indicator on where it could be. And is that where you have your eye? Larry says, I think policies inside the package are more important than the number. I will say that this number is more reasonable by far than the Democratic numbers on a month, a month or two ago. That's why I characterize this as a step in the right direction and I'm cautiously optimistic about it. That's as far as I can go. And he says, why do you think the centrists like Collins and Romney are driving the negotiation in ways they weren't a few months ago? He says, that's hard for me to say. I think that, well, I don't know. I know all of them. I have a great deal of respect for them. He kind of goes into being friends with all of them and that, you know, even though they're on different sides, there's no animosity. But he does say, interestingly, he says, maybe after an election, the sensitivities have waned a little bit in Washington in general. The leaders want a package, but it has to be a good package, a smart package. And again, deal with the core issues of small business. Yes, distribution, keeping schools open, liabilities, etc. How about recurring stimulus help for all of us? Why is that never a part of this, guys? We still don't want giant assistance packages for state and local where he sees it mismanaged. My understanding of this package is they have moved significantly in the White House and the Republican sector and Democrats are more attentive to it now. So that I, that is the answer I can give you. Good news at the White House sounds like they're liking this and the Republicans are moving in that direction and we already have Nancy on board. This is good news, guys. It says, um, are you talking to Biden's people at all? Now, there was a lot of this that was political about Biden, and it actually does, deals with Biden and his economic policies. I took a lot of that out, but I did think there were some really interesting points. He says, I personally have not yet. I've written a couple of notes of congratulations to dear friends of mine who have been announced to be working in that administration. I've written them letters. We are friends. We differ on policies, but we are friends. He also goes into talking about how Biden, it looks like it's going to be tapping. If he's the one that goes into office, he'll be tapping Janet Yellen to be running the feds. So Mnuchin will be out, but uh, Yellen will be in. And he thought that was a really good choice. So he's talked about that. Last thing, he says, the problem solver caucus will president sign. Here's the big kahuna we want to know. He says, I believe it is likely he will. Again, depends importantly on the policy details inside. It's not the number, it's the policies. There is a likelihood he will sign. He hasn't endorsed it. No, he hasn't. But he has indicated he wants additional assistance. And I've spoken to him in Mnuchin about it. I would say coming from Larry, knowing how many weird kind of half answers we get. Ah, my computer's in the way. There we go. I think, guys, these are very, very good signs. And it sounds like all, everything is indicating Trump would be on board with this package. Like he said, it's not about the package. It's not about the number itself. It's about what's in the package. And I think this package is gonna be the closest thing we can get to getting anything done right now. But remember, it's not a forever package. This package is only going right up. It, 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 they say it's about a four month package. We're gonna hear more information and get more language on that between today and tomorrow. And I will keep you up to date with all the updates coming up on that because I think we're gonna get better and better updates from this package as time goes on. However, then it has to be negotiated on and we'll see what these people do with it. Okay guys, if you like this video, like my info, please help me and my channel out and give me a big thumbs up, like the video, subscribe, hit notifications so you can be notified what's in the pipeline for you and your stimulus money. Also y'all, sound off in the comments. I wanna hear everything you guys have to say about all this. And guys, please share this content with as many people you know are struggling right now. People who are on unemployment, waiting for unemployment, stimulus checks, SB, loan and grant issues, bill issues, and everything in between. I've got tons of tools and tons of resources to help you during this very difficult time, and I would love nothing more than to do just that. And guys, make sure to find me on Facebook, Katie's Insight. Like the page, join the group. The group, Katie's Corner, will be changed to Katie's Insight soon. Go in there, ask all the stimulus questions you want. We have people who are helping you on a more one-on-one -on -one basis find stimulus money in your area. It's free. 
We're not selling anything. We're just a group of people trying to help each other. All we ask is that people be kind and respectful. That's all we want in the group. So we just wanna help as many people as possible. Every day I end these videos, I say it with a silent prayer and I'm so reminded of how grateful I am. Where I came, I've come so far in such a short amount of time, like a year, year and a half, and you guys have given me the ability to be on here, pay my bills, and get my life back. I am so grateful to every single one of you that watches. Thank you so much for all the love. Thank you so much for all the support. I will work every single day as hard as I can to make sure that I'm here for you guys and I help you as much as I can during this difficult time. Okay, guys, take care, and I'm wishing you all lots of love and blessings, hugs, and kisses to everybody. Bye, guys.